Parker, I think we can start. This is the speaking test of the International English Language Testing System taking place on the 11th of February. Centre number DDC125 and the candidate is Mehnush Hafi. The candidate number is 01313458. The examiner is Samson C's. Examiner number 443533. Good afternoon, my name is Samson. Would you please tell me your full name? Sure, my name is Mary Shafi. Oh, wonderful. Can I see your identification, please? Yeah, sure. Thank you. You're welcome. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Okay. In the first part of the exam, I will ask you some personal questions. Let's talk about your leisure time. When and how much leisure time do you generally have in the week? Uh, well, actually, I have a quite hectic schedule in the week, and I'm almost uh, working 24-7 from 9 in the morning to ungodly hours at night because I have a full-time job uh, with a very heavy workload which I have to manage. So to answer your question, I can say that I don't really have much free time uh, during the week these days. Right. And who do you generally spend your leisure time with? If I get the chance to have some free time for myself, I prefer to spend it with my family since uh, on the other occasions or the other days, we don't really have uh, much time. And we are so busy with our grueling schedule, so when we have this opportunity, we have to take it to be together. And uh, if I want to tell you about the activities we do when we're together, I can say that we just sit and watch our favorite drama series in the evenings, which is uh, called This Is Us. And uh, we have some junk food, snacks to enjoy this quality time together. Wonderful. And what are some activities you enjoy in your leisure time? Just go through them briefly. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I have a very, very busy schedule and I don't have much free time for myself. So sometimes I just prefer to sit and relax because I feel exhausted uh, at times. And um, yeah, I need, some, uh, I need to get some sleep and free up some time just to uh, maybe be with my family. Uh, that's also something else I would like to do in my free time. We can talk with each other about the plans we have for the future, just to, uh, you know, it actually helps me figure out what I want to do about my life and it motivates me and it encourages me to keep on trying as I am. Yeah, these are the things I normally do in my free time. Wonderful. And what do you like about these activities altogether? Um, I really enjoy spending time with my family, especially my mother and my sister, uh, because uh, it really uh, gives me more energy after I'm, I, I'm done with my work or with my studies. So it really helps me emotionally. And uh, I do need to hang out with my friends uh, on the weekends, especially because uh, we usually go hiking um, and it is a very good chance to be away from the hectic pace of Tehran. And um, I can just look at the snow covered peaks in the mountains and enjoy the fresh air. So these are the things I really love about the activities, these activities I do in my free time. Right. Okay, let's move on to talk about animals. Mm -hmm. Do you like animals? It depends on what kind of animal we're talking about, but I can say that I like farm animals uh, because I encounter them from time to time when I go to the countryside to have a walk. And um, I can say that uh, lambing is an extraordinary time of the year. And I enjoy uh, looking at the uh, lambs suckling up to their mother, I think mothers. I think it's uh, adorable. And um, I think that's the reason why I sometimes go to, the, uh, to my uh, uncle's farm in the northern part of Iran to just see these animals and enjoy the nature. Right. And what sort of animal would you like to have as a pet? I would say I would like to uh, have a dog as a pet, but to be honest, I used to be afraid of dogs until I saw Coco, which was uh, my student's pet, actually. And uh, Coco changed, uh, made a big change in me and made me consider uh, taking a puppy from an animal shelter, which I haven't done yet, but I, I have plans to. And uh, I would say dogs are good animals as a pet because they're companionable, 
they can be house trained and um, they uh, obey commands, which I love. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Right, now in part two, I will give you a card with a topic and you will talk about this topic for two minutes. Mm -hmm. You have one minute to think about what you're going to say and you can make some notes to help you if you wish. Okay, Do you understand? Sure. Thank okay. you. So I want you to describe an interesting animal you have seen. Here's a piece of paper, Thank you. A pencil, and here is your topic. Okay. Okay, so you have uh, one minute to make notes. Please go ahead. Thank you. Okay, that's the one minute up. You now have uh, two minutes to talk. You can go ahead. Okay. Um, so you asked me to talk about an exciting animal that I have seen. To be honest, uh, in my country, we usually see cats, but we rarely see dogs roaming the streets, um, which are not really um, the people's favorite. But um, I mean, in some other countries like Canada, um, uh, people have the chance to see, see some other animals like goose, beavers, conks, or even bears every day. So what I want to say is that if I had the chance to live in a country like Canada, I could name a number of animals right now to answer your question. However, uh, I remember that uh, I went to a zoo in Africa with my sister back in 2018, where I saw an African wildcat. It uh, actually looked similar to a uh, a huge tabby cat, but it had a thicker a tail with a very a blunt um, uh, tip with some black stripes. I can say that it uh, was nothing like the other wild cats I had seen before on TV. And uh, from what I heard, uh, these wild cats are fairly shy and they have been on the brink of extinction for a while, which is sad. And what happened that day was that we were allowed to feed the wild cat. So I tried to do it, uh, but the cat approached me like it wanted to attack me. And I was terrified. Uh, so my sister told me that I should have been more careful because these animals, these wild cats, are, cannot be tamed under any circumstances. So in my opinion, that was a really interesting uh, animal because it was different. And I had never seen something like that before. So I can say that's the reason I can I just explain about this animal. It was something extraordinary to me. And uh, um, to talk more about that, I can say that. Uh, Thank you very much. Okay, that's the two minutes up. Okay. Uh, I can take your papers back yes, now. Sure. Thank you very much. All right, in part two, you talked about an interesting animal that you saw. Now, in this part, I want to ask you some questions related to this topic. Now, how can animals cause problems for humans? Um, to answer this question, I can say that um, they can only pose a problem when they pose a threat to our safety or, to, uh, or when they hunt the animals that we herd. Uh, what I mean is that maybe some kinds of uh, wild animals may bite us and that can result in some injuries and infections which in some cases uh, are considered as um, irreparable harm to our health. And, um, um, and on the other hand, in my opinion, maybe they can cause emotional problems like when we have a pet and uh, they die due to some reasons which can contribute to some um, to a very deep sorrow and sadness, I would say, yeah, that's a problem, actually. 
Right. And what kind of animals do people keep as pets in your country mostly? I don't really have much information to answer that question because I'm not an animal lover and I don't know many people who uh, have pets. But from what I have heard, many Iranians keep some birds like parrots and budgies, I can say. Um, however, they are allowed to fly free within the apartment, uh, but the, their owners uh, just make sure to keep all the doors and windows closed or they may escape. And um, on the other hand, in the past few years, Iranians have been, uh, have been uh, um, showing some interest to take care of some stray puppies, which I consider a really nice job. Wonderful. And do you think animals will still be important in the future? Um, what I predict is that, yes, they will absolutely have the, um, the same significance in the future or even more because uh, they are actually essential for maintaining a balanced ecosystem and uh, for the production of uh, uh, livestock, which is uh, which influences the water, air, or soil, and um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, due to the reason that many people, not only in Iran, but also in other countries, have been showing uh, an interest to um, take care of puppies or pets generally, um, and they have been supporting animal rights. Yes, uh, in the future we can have even more of these animals or we can bring some of them back with uh, the cloning technology maybe. And uh, how do you think we can stop animals going extinct, the ones that are critically mm -hmm. endangered now, this day and age? I think uh, it's something that uh, both the government and the people have to do. Uh, like, uh, first of all, the government has to take some steps to just take care of some animals or establish some rules uh, to forbid some acts which can harm the animals or their lives. And on the other hand, we have to just improve our own culture, like the uh, culture we have among us, uh, not to harm the animals. Or um, I'm not just talking about harming the animal. If we just uh, teach ourselves to take care of the animals or uh, just do do nothing to them, that would also work. We don't need to just uh, do something to improve the situation, you know. Thank you very much. Okay, that's the end of the test. Do you want to know what band score you'll get in the IELTS speaking test? Perhaps you want to improve your performance and prepare yourself for the real test? Then why not book an online mock test with us that will last for 25 minutes. 12 minutes of the test itself 13 minutes of comprehensive feedback, plus we'll give you useful tips on how to make your performance better. Remember, all our examiners are especially trained by British Council instructors, so we know how to help you. Join us. Now we can quickly just uh, go to your band score and then we can look Thank at the you. other situation. So all I can say is, at the very beginning is, wow. Thank you very much. Thank it was you. brilliant. Um, that wow had a lot of meaning to it, actually, because, you know, we're looking at, uh, we're clearly looking at a nine here, because uh, you're, you're very much in control of not only the English language, but also all the, the structures and all the techniques that are required for the IELTS speaking test. So let's go through them one by one, and you, you can hear me out here. I mean, fluency and coherence, uh, we'll, we'll look at that first. I mean, the, your linking words, they were wonderful, they were all in the correct uh, spots as we were looking at answering the way you were answering the questions referring to the questions even that you, you didn't know what the questions were you made some reference towards the question you gave the answer and then you went on to your off topic particular with the particularly with the discussion uh, side of things which is absolutely fine as long as there's a reference towards the uh, the actual answer then we, you're good to go basically then you'll you'll get your marks for the speed and also connecting your ideas together, which was also, also fantastic. You had your ideas, you had your sub-ideas. Uh, I would say you had a, a very uh, you know, great speed of the way you, you were talking. Um, normally we would you know, tell the candidates to speak a little bit slower, but in your case, obviously you had no problem with being able to uh, 
produce your idea and keep your idea going. So speed didn't get in the way of anything, as, as, as we could see clearly see there. And you know, your intonation, it sounded very natural. Again, adding to the, all this uh, fluency and coherence business, uh, just having a general conversation and being able to express the language the best you can. And then, uh, okay, let's look at vocabulary now. You had a wide range of vocabulary. I could see you could just easily paraphrase any word and have the same meaning and use different words just to connect all those uh, different vocabulary together. And it was a wide range and you used them all in the correct places depending on the topic and depending on the, the question that was asked. So again, uh, I didn't really see any difficulty or any struggle with your vocabulary. Wonderful stuff. Okay, now to uh, grammar and accuracy. The Again, grammar, I didn't even see you have any uh, grammatical errors at all, actually, to be honest with you. And that's wonderful. Uh, it would be great if everyone could do that. Um, structure, again, I mean, your simple sentences, like, no problem at all. Complex structures, you didn't have any problem with that, and you didn't even stutter. Okay, there were a few uh, ums here and there, and maybe just very tiny bit. And that would happen with any native speaker, any English speaker, being asked a question they, they didn't know about. So uh, the, there, will, there will always be a pauses. In fact, pauses are good in the IELTS speaking test. That gives you, you know, a few seconds to pull yourself together and you know, give out your answer. So. Uh, Great grammar and accuracy was wonderful. Uh, pronunciation, again, uh, with the simple uh, pronunciations and complex, uh, harder words to pronounce, I, I think you were spot on and you were very clear. And I don't think you would have any problem at all with that. So, you know, we're, looking, we're clearly looking at a nine here. This is, this is a typical nine uh, in, the, in the IELTS speaking test. Uh, I mean, are there any uh, questions you'd like to ask me? To, regarding uh, this, the whole situation. I was a bit confused with part two because the question that I was asked, um, I didn't really have much to say about it. But uh, what I did was going off the topic for the first, I think the first minute, I guess it took me one minute to talk about some other things, my own experience, and then I, I just came back to the main topic. So. Is that a problem? No, no, it's not a problem at all. In fact, we encourage candidates to do that. And I was going to make a reference to that, actually. You spoke for, a, you know, the full two minutes, and I even stopped you in the middle. That's what the examiner does. They stop the candidates. So when the two minutes is up, that's fine. And going off topic like that, I mean, you, you, you gave reference to the answer straight away. So you yeah. clearly understood what the, what the question was, even though you didn't have much information or maybe you couldn't talk too much about the actual topic that was asked. So we actually encourage candidates to mm -hmm. do that and uh, you did that perfectly you made the 30% uh, reference towards the the actual topic and then you went off topic and it's absolutely fine to do that that's not a problem in mm -hmm. fact that that's a technique that you know we would al always in encourage for our IELTS candidates to do that uh, because it will save you it will uh, definitely kill off the two minutes of time and then again you you, you made another reference to the the actual question so that just that proves to the examiner that you've understood the question even though you don't have much information about it and you can you're there to talk and it was it was all fluent and I didn't have any problem you know with the telling it's more like telling a story that the two yeah. minutes of yeah, um, actually I didn't it, I mean going to Africa didn't really happen to me I just wanted to say something, and right. that's why I refer to an experience I never had. Oh, that's, there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I just that. wanted to explain about the topic, so... Yeah. Absolutely, because uh, it's, it's about talking for two minutes, yeah. and uh, based on the four criteria, so it doesn't matter if, that's, if that never happened, it could be a complete fake story. It doesn't matter. If, you're, if, if it's true or false, that in, in the IELTS speaking test, I mean, uh, some people know this, some people don't know this, but being true or false really doesn't matter. In, in the IELTS speaking test. It's all about just understanding the question and getting through it with your ideas, going off topic if you have to, because no candidate is expected to know fully about what, what topics there are. I mean, uh, the brain would explode if, if, you, if you wanted to go through every single topic in the world and, and memorize everything. It's impossible. And unfortunately, some uh, some academies do that, in fact, they even, mm -hmm. they inc which is not a good thing. They told them to keep studying different topics. It's not about studying different topics and memorizing stuff from... I think that's impossible. It is impossible. You're absolutely right. And if what, what the candidates would do, uh, what, what you just did, I would encourage all the candidates to do is when you don't know about a topic which is 
very likely to happen, it's very natural, because you are actually tested on not knowing about a topic and dealing with the situation about a topic you don't know about. And you did that clearly, you made reference to the question, I, I, I'm not very well informed about this topic, but I can talk about this, and then you answer the question in 30%, and then you go on to your own topic, that's absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. So definitely what you did was, we're, we're looking at the correct techniques of a, a band score nine. So very, very well done. Thank you very much. And do you, there's no other questions, and I guess. No, thank you. Thank you so much for the feedback. Oh, it's my pleasure, and hopefully we'll see you around. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.